Okay, this, we have to see how that works. Public safety. Public safety. Fifty-five percent in total. Fifty-five cents out of every dollar that our government has tracks. Interpretation will be over with that. Then all demographic interpretations. Quick, quick, quick. Yes. So where would uh, infrastructure be in this chart? It wouldn't be in the middle chart. It wouldn't be there then. Yeah. Okay. That's what it's like. That is probably going to pay for that work over on our infrastructure. This is a set of risks that we're talking about. Again, you know, in perhaps in perfect way, it's a new thing, but it's just trying to do it. We're not giving it to John Trump to tell you about it. Red, you'd love to do anything for that, but only that. Um, all right. The other way to look at this is to sort of look at positions in the budget. Jacksonville has 7,374 budgeted positions for school year 2017 18. In addition, the city is budgeted a million and a half part time hours, about overtime funds, which equates to another 744 time table positions. Taken together, roughly reflect one position for every time. Good. We're going to have another city. Yeah. Yeah. Of those staff get distributed across the agencies again. We have office of the sheriff and fire and rescue, which is together with 62 percent of the staff in Illinois. Public works and employee one finance administration, and then the green one and down. Okay, so that gives you some idea of again how both personnel and expenditures go across the service. More to come when we talk about comparisons and trying to put some context around this. And again, I'll give you a quick session and come back and appreciate that. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about property taxes. Again, the largest source of funds. These total taxable property value was $64.3 million in 2017. This value was slightly lower than the capital of 2008. Remember what happened in the Great Recession? The property value was still below what it was in 2008, a decade ago. And the 2017 figure was a rebound from the low of the decade. In 2012, it was down to $2.7 billion worth of tax value. Again, we talked about the total. Collections. Again, tax collections, product of tax levy, which in turn are a product of the mortgage rate, the breach plan on taxes versus the taxable value across the city's real property and certain small amounts of tangible property. Okay, what does that millage look like again? How much are we talking about? Well, the city of Jacksonville itself, the rate, I'm going to talk about how that's. Then over time is 11.4419 mil. What's a mil? It's about a thousand dollars of taxable value of property. So again, directly to the city of Jacksonville, you've got a, a two hundred thousand dollar property in the land, right? Adjusted city, right? But there are other tax authorities that make up the tax bill, the school district, right? And investments can happen those on the schools. That's not weapons of mass destruction, that's the water half on the district. <laughs> Just about a quarter of a mil. Uh, the Florida Inland Navigation District, you're paying a tiny amount in the Adam Law, you're paying about 18 mils per uh, thousand dollars. So, you know, again, for a $200,000 house, you're paying a mil for that. Two to six hundred. Just a fifth of Yes? Jim, how is the comparison between the city of Jacksonville on the operations, you know, 11.44 versus the school, and almost half of that compared with other um, counties around the city. Um, stay tuned for the part two. He's not going to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> Just if I want to try to answer that, partially remember they, they, they're different 
taxing authorities in the event they're all going to show up with property taxpayers' tax bill in account for the return bond. So that is the best answer that I can come up with. There are a few of us who also pay city of Jacksonville Beach and that 10 Beach. So, right, so those are separate. My understanding of consolidated government is everything but those separate locations. Yeah. Okay, let's look at how that moves right this. We'll get the world translated together. Okay, and these are the various components. See, 2009, about 16 total of the mortgages. Jumped up in 2014, and if you look at, at property tax and everything, you see that it's kind of reacting to what probably happened with property values. But since 2014, it's about the same for property value. All right. Let's talk about that. Those kind of things, I don't know if there's still a lot of huge, you know, 
some of the other ones, gives you ways to get things done that would otherwise not get done. You have to start thinking about what is the cost of those and the small one that's a really important question of education. A lot of that's going on. The residents come out with a, an infrastructure plan that relies a lot on a small investment of public dollars. You leverage a lot of private dollars. Some some um, municipal um, projects have uh, they use flight, <laughs> but at the end of the lease period, they own it for X number of dollars. So basically, uh, it's like this, but it's private dollars. Yeah. So that's that's a problem. Yeah, but people think I don't know these things. Okay. Okay. But again, I'll show you out the document. And I can read, I'm going to read this. The city of Jackson was dead down in the policy, which it has, which is a very good thing. It's a broad policy document designed to promote effective and efficient management of the city's debt program, provide a framework for the structuring and monitoring of debt assurances, and demonstrate the need to long term financing plan. Policies adopted therein along with guidance and limitations included in the city's annual capital improvement plan, CRP, and debt affordability study. Again, things that are done as part of, of the budget process is not necessarily in the way that six months ago are intended to ensure that future elected office officials have reasonable flexibility to address emerging issues and consistently apply for them. I went through, I would kind of like the city's both its policies and metrics that it puts in place. And it's going to to monitor those. Um, I don't know if that's the same thing. Um, let's look at, at, at this value there. There are targets that they set, that the city sets, uh, a target, a uh, maximum, or a minimum, and they monitor against those metrics to see where they are. So, one of the metrics is an overall net debt as a percentage of full market value. Their target is 2.5%. Maximum of a city for a while, so it's two and a half. We're currently in this fiscal year, 2.69%. General service district debt service, again, that's that 1.17 million on this level, as a percentage of GST revenues, 9.04%. The target is 11.5%. Lower is better, go below, too low. Unassigned general fund balances as a percentage of general service district revenue, including emergency reserve. So again, I'm not going to go through all of these, but you see that they have set, I consider them fairly reasonable metrics around this, they monitor closely against that, uh, and they're all within the targets and measures that are really going to happen. So I can see this good job on debt policy and debt management. Who wants to venture a guess? So we've got standing debt at the beginning of the current fiscal year. So again, here is a plan for the, or a debt trend over five years. Again, this is directly out of budget. That's the number that we start the year at, $2.4 billion. Prior general authorizations, that was the prior plan, so the debt has been authorized. You know, that gets added in. The capital improvement plan generally is the total additions. You see how much is expected to be retired at the end of the year. And that follows the five-year plan, and you see that uh, looking at those capital plans that they attached to them at the end of the five year period, the number will be down about $2 billion. So I'm going to start going faster because otherwise the time is running up against the clock. Okay. Obviously, related to debt is the capital that it's going to fund. Okay. Multi year forecast, five year plan gets put in place. Okay. Part of Jackson Jacksonville Municipal Code. Private capital improvement plan is designed to be financially feasible and provides the funding source and amount of funding capital for capital costs of each project and funding source and amount of funding for anticipated post construction operation costs of each project. And a five year capital improvement plan should be filed and approved each 
each fiscal year, we probably have to add to all the agencies that are responsible for approving our year, the five year capital plan. Okay. And I think this is an important piece of this when it talks about the anticipated post construction operation costs for each project. That needs to be taken into consideration. Again, when we talk about that, we talk about capital when we're starting, we talk a little bit about budget trying to the future. And it's these areas where the city is kind of constrained going forward, where they make commitments and obligations. Of course, the obvious the capital plan can be changed, but things change. But you're starting to see where some obligations get put in place and some things mixed into the future. We'll talk a little bit about the past as well. Okay. Chapter 122 the municipal code requires that the CIP be prepared annually by the finance department, which the municipal received from various city departments and independent authorities and agencies. And again, this talks a little bit about the process and going through it, um, with one exception, which is the last bullet. I think it's important the city council then receives the mayor's proposed five year CLP with the proposed annual budget in July. Once adopted by the city council, the first fiscal year of the plan becomes the city's capital improvement budget for that year. So it's a five year plan, so you're going to spend this much. This, this year's portion will actually be. So that budget, does it have specific projects in it yeah. every year? Yes. yes. And so when people who live in this town say, we just had a flood and I need the creek cleaned out where I live, it would be in that budget? No? The creek thing might be, might be names. No, the, the creek. Well, the creek. Yeah, if, if it's a capital project, no. The municipal code has to be a capital project, but also this way, right? The project must have a total cost greater than $100,000 and use collected for more than 10 years. It sounds like that would qualify. Be a one time outlay, it's a non recurring thing, like the operations. Add to or enhance the value or extend the life of the city's physical assets. Capital improvement plan budget should be submitted annually with the city. And we talked one thing to note is that capital is not necessarily debt funding. For some, it's done on what's called cash flow basis on a general basis. And so those dollars may be actually appropriated to find those for that. So. 251 projects. There's the potential comment on that. Again, it's there. No different. And the five year plan total is one. All right, let's look at what the last decade has and the world. This is, again, interesting context of what you already know. 2008, time was riding high. The only had a basket for Brooklyn. <laughs> um, and we've seen a gradual recovery in the economy. But as we pointed out, the taxable value we still have quite the sort of evaluated from that measure. And we'll to see how things have sort of progressed over the last few years. And that all stems directly out of the way back. I'm going to talk about pensions. I'll do that. And then hopefully we'll be done by 5 o'clock. I'll speak quickly. And then we'll talk about the principal steps. Again, just this is a repeat of the thing we looked at general fund budget resources uh, on an all funds basis. I'm just going to this. So I'm going to try to this Pac Man. Property taxes, these are actual collections. Again, you see. Dropping and then increasing the big decrease in property tax collections. That's the thing. Get back to the chart we had about the millage rate. Um, the millage rate has been coming down since 2014 before steady down a little bit. Yet total property tax revenues have increased by probably about the same rate since they were where they were before. There were a few rate increases. Okay. Yeah, but they're smaller. small. Right? Uh, that was 14%. So, yeah, that was between 13 and 14. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And since 14, again, they had come down. And the reason I put this back up is you look at what were happening in property tax value and employment, which I'm sure is putting significant pressure on your budget. Something needs to be done. 
2014 yield rate increase sort of that up, and then subsequently, even as the yield rate has sort of been steadily come down a little bit, collections have increased as property values have increased. All right, state share revenues again, you see the trend of lesser revenue. Coming out of the recession and then we're picking up again. We spent much time on these. The local option sales tax we talked about. They have some sales taxes to the state. Their piece. Utility services tax. Um, yes. JKS with the dollars there. Nine million dollars. Contribution from local units again. JKS. Trend over time, you see the numbers. So that's that's the 116 we talked about. 90, actually 210, 215. So again, three significant numbers. That's the franchise. Franchise fees, another significant piece. So wait, those four. No, that's the communication services tax. That's that, that, that part of the franchise tax. A significant portion of that's going to be again, again, small again. So, again, the quarters, the council's talked about the 40, the 40 and a half. But again, you can sort of see what those numbers are like and how they're trying to look at it. Gas taxes, I, I can't for the life of me figure out what happened in FSB in 13. I can't imagine. Not driving that much, but again, it's, it's pick up there. Communication services tax. This is something that you see not just in Jacksonville, but across the board, because the base of communication services are being growth as communication services sort of move from that last paragraph. So those are ten new trends for some of the revenue sources that we talked about. Okay, this is complicated, but I think very, very interesting. And again, I keep calling some of my notes that I don't have to call What you see here are three bars for each of the years. So let me take a moment to explain this. The blue bar is the actual net budget. It's that figure that's equivalent to um, here, you see it's 1.950 in all funds, right? 2018 budget. When you look at the middle bar, that takes the amount of budget and adjusts it for inflation. Because dollars in today's dollars don't buy as much as the dollars from 2008. Obviously, if you look at the third bar, it adjusts for a combination of inflation and the growth in population. It's to adjust. Again, you start right on the budget. Don't worry about it. It is there. Okay. So, jump over here. First year, those are all the same. Yeah, the same number because there's no inflation, there's no um, growth in population. Here you see the actual uh, budget blue bar, inflation. And then some of these numbers can be uh, way higher than and then population shrunk a bit because that would be required for that to be a higher number than that. 2011, not sure what happened here, but it was so much. If, if you follow this all the way across and you get to there's the nominal budget. It's $1.95 billion. Okay? But if you look at the adjustment for inflation and population, you will find that the equivalent, if you look at the actual budget the first year, the amount was $1.64 billion. Okay? If you look at the equivalent here, in 2018, it's $1.58 billion. Okay? And I'm sorry, I made a mistake. The middle bar is adjusted for both inflation and population, and the right hand bar is adjusted just for population. So, when you adjust for the impact of both inflation and population growth over the decade, the city is spending less than it did in the Something to, to think about a little bit. And again, sort of putting these numbers in some context, the actual budget is grown, but its impact. And city and the people who have shrunk as its value has been impeded by inflation and having to serve the larger population. Yeah, kind of clear. Yeah, you know, slide more on that chart. And the next one, and it does 
does the same. But here, here we go. Well, this one I'm going to work on now. These last couple of years here. This is the proposal. Half the dollars. So, again, we get our budget, general fund, our general fund, total city. Look at some of those rates over here. So, city is made up a lot of dollars, a lot of investments. So, well, of course, the last couple of years, every rest of the year. We're still not to where we can, but I was saying, it was in 2008, it was in 2009. Yeah, that's the numbers already left in charge. The goal was there. Yes. Yeah, it's the goal of our, because that, that had the goal for it means just, just what we're going to have in the past. This does the same analysis for consolidated budget. Well, that, wait, wait, before you tell me, the time's just yet. That's a big deal. So, Joe, does that tell us something about the uh, lack of investment, say, in community services, schools, the cleaning out grades? Yes. That's the consolidated yeah. budget. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
what I've seen in other places, especially where you're not going to be a constitutional officer, they tend to put some pressure for continued investment in public safety as the city government or the county government looks to adapt to physical constraints that often falls on other portions of the public safety. I just sort of pointed that out. Again, this is right out of the uh, Yes, it's other staffing. Other dollars that go towards other safety. Yeah, it's yeah. And, and, and again, I didn't have a chance to go back and look at the individual budget, all the budgets costs that they put. I think it's, it's safe to say that this is a good analog for funding in those departments. It's analogous. It probably attracts what you call senior officers because, again, especially in talking about the department budgets, a lot of those costs are personnel. Why are you investing more money in 
from safety when I'm you know, I'm spending more than I was, you know, is there a causality? Is there a relationship between the dollars you're spending and what you're saying? Again, I have to solve those issues here, but I think it's it's super worthy to do in the city of the time. Okay. All right. Let's talk about the last thing I have to talk about. I've talked about too much, but I'm sure you all know more about why that was just a pension situation. Okay. Again, we talk about things that can be done now that are back in the future and maybe in times of hands. Let's look at this picture that I can wrap this up in less than 10 minutes. It's five o'clock. Maybe there are going to be five o'clock. I think that'll allow it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Uh, pension liability of 2.8 billion, right? Dealing with this liability was generated by annual payments to the crowd out of savings and priorities. So the mayor, the council, and the mayor of the people did a vote to deal with that. August 2016, Jacksonville voters approved a referendum implementing a plan to deal with this issue from them directly in numbers of 65 percent, 55 percent. So pretty, pretty significant acceptance of this plan from all sides. How did we get here? Okay. This is actually from Max Rowe, a report on a police and fire pension. Uh, from history from 2002, the country's bars are the actual values of the assets in the police and pension fund, whereas the other bar looks at the accrued liability on an actuarial basis. We're not getting too heavily into what actuaries do. It tries to understand what the assets are of the funds versus what the actual liabilities will be. And you can see that in 2002, yeah, it wasn't that bad, right? But as time went on, the asset value was increased at a much lower rate than the liability. And this blue line that you see actually is against this axis and tracks the percentage of the liabilities that are actually covered by your assets. And you see it came down substantially, maybe 75% in 2002. Now it's a little bit below 50%. So, what did the city decide to do? This is the question that was placed before the Jacksonville voters. If you all look at this, it's really cool. We love it. Okay. Permanent closing up to three of the city's underfunded defined benefit retirement plans, increasing the employee contribution to those plans to a minimum of 10% to 8%. Um, and ending the Better Jacksonville half cent sales tax that all required to adopt one half cent sales tax solely dedicated to reducing the city's unfunded pension liability. South says pension liability sales tax, which ends upon elimination of the unfunded pension liability for 30 years, maximum to be allowed. 65% of the voters in the city of Jackson said yes, that should be allowed. Okay. So again, what did it do? It increased um, employee contributions to the city. It closed those plans to new members. Not this question, but the overall plan. And so going forward, new employees are not going to have a defined benefit plan, which says that no matter what you put in, you have a defined, you know, have a defined contribution. And it's worth what it's worth. Right? So it's sort of changed going forward. And the other thing that we did was said that in 2030, when the better Jacksonville half cent is up and would otherwise be enough for renewal, we're going to replace it with a half cent that is dedicated solely to dealing with the pension. And so doing, it pushed a lot of that debt out further in terms of dealing with that debt. What happens when you push that out? It's more expensive. Okay. The council passed a series of laws in April 2017 to implement a comprehensive pension reform agenda, creating pension liability surtax. Okay. That's the asset that we talked about. Closing pensions to new members after 930, creating a new defined contribution plan. We talked about that. And implementing collection, collective bargaining agreements calling for 10% contributions from members. And of course, there are some changes between the system to the part of the negotiation. Okay. This is for the pension reform plan. Okay. All right, the half cent pension liability surtax is the start to an existing sales tax from the Jackson plan expires, but the city gains financial relief sooner by transferring a large portion of the pension debt to the period after the sales tax begins. Right? And the trade off of gaining financial relief in the coming years is that the longer it takes to pay off the debt, the longer the cost, the longer the system of the credit card, the home mortgage costs are more to pay down the period of business cycles. So, what you've done essentially is committed to probably another 30 years or close to it beyond 2030, you've got a tax cut. And use that period 
to take down the unfunded liability from your existing pension plans. And the other sort of, of aspect of this is that the kind of things that you were funding out of the gas pipeline should now be considered to provide additional security. Not in the case of the Yeah, I mean, I think it's just that you know, we talk about trends for the future, we talk about sort of trends coming up, and we look at existing debt, and we look at sort of the capital program, and we look at this, this increase in substantial increase in the trend of uh, capital programs. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next slide. Yeah, so this is the current state of the financial services sector. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next slide. Yeah, it's even now that we can later, but also this is going to take place about being able to fund those things that. Yes. Has anyone else, uh, are all the most other counties to see this kind of suspension of my application is also, has anyone else adopted a plan like this in the state of Florida? Uh, no, not that I'm aware of. And uh, again, my understanding is that actually those things, of course, you know, it has a 100% budget for the pension plan. But most of them are up to the 90% of the applications that most of many of them are. Again, my experience is in Florida and outside of Florida. How I, I think that the size and depth of, of Jacksonville's issues is much more than, than many of the counties in these other states of Illinois and the state pension has huge problems. Uh, some of the pensions are better funded if you look at sort of all states and other states. One of the things to look at in comparison is something that's out there. My understanding is Jacksonville was for a long time in making some pretty sizable derivative needed some kind of, of either because it's a big amount of employee, and that's what it's all about. Right? They have been able to live through it, and also it's true behind it, and there's sort of some of the other things to try. Any other questions, Rob? So, if you think about the trend that we're seeing in the world, and if you were looking to find ways to um, help offset it or invest, other than you know what we've already broken on, is there any possibility of ever going back to the state to say, let's reverse this? First of all, we don't have to roll it back, and we didn't roll it back last year. We just kept it the same, and I guess people were the tax increase. Um, so, so we don't have to roll it back. Just because the state calls it a tax increase, even though we kept the rate the same, I think what has to be done is an education where you educate people and say, hey, we're keeping the rate the same. If you're buying your house went up, you're going to pay a little more, but you want to get it more. We have to tell them what they're getting. Police officers, more you know, better parks, better uh, you know, better services, whatever the case may be. We have to sell them on that and explain to them what uh, not having a rollback means. But, I mean, we're going to see a six percent increase probably in our income next year. Uh, we did have a pretty big bump in payroll, if you remember, because part of the pension reform was. That payroll, uh, payroll increase in seven years. I'm surprised we kept anybody. But uh, that was the, uh, uh, we don't have to roll it back. So we'll have to see. Uh, we have to explain why or not. And the reason I think really surprises me about the, uh, I've never seen this little pamphlet that Jim brought that the Payton yeah. administration did. So those of us who are here, we remember John did this because he was trying to raise money. Yes, yes. So let us explain it to you people and how we use it, and it worked. Why don't we keep doing that? I mean, don't roll it back. We need the, we need the investment. And the other piece of why I was asking that is with us being the largest Geographic county in the continental United States, we are faced with some of these challenges just based on our state. And if, if we don't want to do something, 
Barnes Park system, the dog was playing as a huge school system. We've got to come to grips with what our geography is and the implications of that for any kind of uh, moving the needle on a quality of life for this community. This, this, this is your testimony at the council hearings. Yeah, that's what you've ever seen. Yes, exactly right. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, I did answer the question you asked. Me Mayor Owens, that's, that's a good cool <laughs> <thing. laughs> <laughs> So, okay. Uh, it's 5 o'clock conclusions, yeah. right? We cover a lot of things today. And the question for the hours. Okay. Hopefully, it provides a basis for more in depth look at the objective budget process that we're going to have in the future session. Three questions. So, the CISO West of New York will have to back four minutes. Next two presentations benchmarking Jacksonville, right? March 23rd, 1 o'clock to 3. It's going to be a short session, 22 hours. Okay. And hopefully, this will be a little fun and interactive exercise in budget priorities on May 4th. Thank you for your time.